Who will be in United starting 11 for the beginning of the 2019-20 season? That's the big question of today's video. Now, given that we've already been linked with over 60 players this summer, it might be considered an almost impossible task to guess that starting 11, but I'm gonna do just that, and I really wanna hear yours. So make sure you get yours down in the comments after you've taken a look at mine. Before we get into this video, if you are new to United People's TV, come on, subscribe, get involved, and if you are regular, you know the drill by now, drop a like on the video and share it. Share it around, why not? But let's get straight into this one. Now, of course, we're gonna start in goal, and there's big question marks here about whether David De Gea will stay at the club. I think he will. I don't think United will sell De Gea. Whether or not we tie him down to a new contract or we lose him, I think on a free transfer in the 2020 summer, that's down to our club to decide. But I just can't see United selling De Gea and replacing him adequately this summer. And as good as I think Sergio Romero is as a number two, I'd have question marks over him coming in and taking over the reins from De Gea as our number one. Maybe that's a bit unfair of me. Maybe it's almost hypocritical. I don't really think it is because De Gea is just levels above most goalkeepers in the world. And I don't think United will let him go this summer. And at left back, I don't see any change either. I think Luke Shaw will keep his position. I think if United do sign a left back, it will be to deputise Luke Shaw. Someone like, as I said, Ryan Sessignon, I thought would be a very smart signing by United this summer if we did complete that. I just can't see United selling Shaw and replacing him again. I don't think we need to. I think Shaw, yes, he can certainly improve, certainly going forward, but Shaw's a good player. Won our player of the season last year, which was a bit weird given how many goals our defence conceded, but Luke Shaw should absolutely be keeping his place here. Fought through adversity to come through, and he's shown more determination than most of the players inside our current squad. That's why I would keep Shaw in at left-back. And next to him, at left centre-back, I would play Victor Lindelof. I think out of all the squad we had last year, Lindelof is the only centre-back that I would have any real trust in going forward. Smalling does a job, extremely limited footballer. Phil Jones, no thank you. Marcus Rojo, no thank you. Eric Bai, such question marks over him. And Lindelof, I think, can go on to become a great centre-back. But he just needs a good defensive partner, which I'll get onto in a bit. But Lindelof, in his first year, he was shaky. In his second year, certainly the most improved player of the season. And it was arguably the best player of the season. A lot of people wanted him to win player of the year ahead of Luke Shaw. But Lindelof, I think, has all the capability of becoming a much better defender. than, And he was good last year. But I think he can be great if he's got the right centre-back partner. But who is that going to be? We've been linked with Kalidou Koulibaly, Harry Maguire, Matthias De Ligt, and loads of others. The one I think that United will actually sign is Toby Alderweireld. And that's simply because he's cheap. He's Premier League proven. And at the, the sad reality is I don't have belief in United to complete the transfers that I feel Solskjaer wants to complete. I think we're going to be signing easy options in certain positions, certainly. And De Ligt, Koulibaly and Maguire, I feel are going to be too much for the Glazers. Whereas Alderweireld is 25 million, Premier League proven, World Cup experience, Champions League final experience. He's a sort of player who could come in and if he kept his fitness, be a leader straight away. And maybe he could only come in for a couple of years and then it allows sort of to Anzebe a sort of clear path into our first team. And I think he'll be in and around the first team squad next year. And maybe that's another reason why we wouldn't go big on a big centre back is because Solskjaer would have belief in Turan Zebe and sign someone like out of Viral, who's slightly cheaper, and play both. I don't know. But I just, as much as I want United to complete the likes of Koulibaly, De Ligt, Maguire, one of them, I think out of Viral is the most likely out of all of them. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And on to the right back, which we all know we need to improve because Ashley Young cannot play there anymore. And I think this is where United will complete their major big signing. And that's why I've gone for Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Now, the question marks really about Wan-Bissaka are the price. I think 50 to 60 to 70 million. I'm not sure. 50 million plus, certainly, Crystal Palace want for him. And you can understand that. Young, English, Premier League proven. It always comes with a, a little add-on to the price tag. And certainly when it's United signing them as well. So that's going to be the reason why this transfer goes on and on and on. But I feel United will complete that. I think we want Wan-Bissaka enough that we will pay the money for it. 
Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're probably likely to sign Thomas Munier instead because, again, like Alderweireld at centre-back, he'll be a cheaper option. But I'm hoping, maybe hoping more than predicting, but uh, no, I'm predicting that we will sign wan -Bissaka. Still question marks over whether we can get it over the line or not, and that's just the reality of this summer transfer window. But I feel United want wan -Bissaka enough that we'll keep pushing and we will pay that money to sign him for Crystal Palace. So that's the defence done. And moving on to midfield, I think there'll be two central midfielders. And I think Nemanja Matic will still be one of them. In an ideal situation, if we're playing football manager here, United would sell Matic and replace him with a more mobile, defensive-minded midfielder. I just don't think that will happen. I think there's other bigger priorities in this squad than to replace Matic this summer. I think Matic and Mata, for example, will go next year. But this year, I think we'll still see Matic in the start of 11 come the start of the season. And if he can find maybe the sort of form that he showed right at the start after we signed him, maybe he'll be a better player than he was last year under Solskjaer. He certainly improved under Solskjaer, but Matic can't play every game anymore. No matter if he is in this starting eleven, he can't be playing in the starting eleven every single week. He's too languid, he's too slow, he's not dynamic enough. He doesn't really suit this style that Solskjaer wants. That being said, I think he'll be in the starting eleven, And maybe having a new midfield partner, which he does in this team of mine, that will take away a bit of the running and allow Matic to simply concentrate on screening the defence, which he is good at. But looking at his midfield partner, this has to be the hardest position to predict because we've been linked with Bruno Fernandes, Ruben Neves, Tanguy Ndombele, Wilfred Ndidi, Decore, any number of midfielders you could put in this team. And I've gone for Wilfred Ndidi. Why have I gone for him? I think Bruno Fernandes too much. Ruben Neves, you know I want that to happen, but maybe too much. Ndombele, I think tons of teams are in for him. And I just worry about our ability to negotiate in an environment where there are multiple clubs wanting the same player. I don't know whether our negotiation tactics are good enough for that. And indeed, in that sense, you know, we might have opened the talks about James Madison, early discussions anyway. It, it seems easy going for Ndidi. And again, that's why I've gone for Ndidi, because I don't trust United to get the difficult transfers over the line, other than Wan-Bissaka. And Ndidi will be a cheaper option than most, Premier League proven, young, which is what Solskjaer wants. But more than that, he'd be a very, very good signing, Ndidi, for any team, especially United, because he would bring that sort of dynamism into our midfield, which we desperately need, whether Leicester want to sell him or not is a different thing altogether. But indeed, he is the central midfielder that I've gone for. Now, this is clearly going to cause debate. I want to know from you, what central midfield signing do you think United are going to complete this summer? Because we have to complete at least one. And if Pogba goes, we have to complete more than one, that's for sure. But for me, indeed, he is that central midfielder that I think United will sign. Let me know who you think in the comments below. Now, before we move on to the final midfielder, there is something I want to quickly chat to you about. Esteemed company, you know him as a City fan, has been talking over on 888 Sport about United's title-winning chances and what's coming in the future. And there's, a, there's something I've got to say about it. My unpopular opinion is that Manchester United won't win the league for another 10 years. I think in general, they're stuck by what they used to be. And I think the fact that they've got soul scoring proves that they're really harping for the days where they used to walk the league. But it isn't going to happen anymore. I think Man City fans really need to know their place. Because 10 years ago, they had Richard Dunn, Benjani, Stephen Ireland, Shea Given in their team. And look at where they are now. Football works in cycles. And United are at the bottom of the cycle right now. We're six years into a bad cycle, but it will change. A few years ago, Liverpool were nowhere near it either. So for him to say that United won't win in the next 10 years, it's just, just get in the bin. You know, City fans flying high at the moment, but United will be back. Yes, it's taken longer than anybody expected, but don't write us off. And City fans, 10 years ago, you were a gutter team. I'm not saying United are going to get a shake billionaire, to come and buy all the goodies so you can win it all. But United will be back. And I want you to quickly, just head over to that video, please. Leave a comment there, just saying how stupid he is for making this out to be a truth and reality. City were nowhere 10 years ago. United might be nowhere in the Premier League right now. We'll be back, and certainly within a decade, which is ridiculous. But anyway, make sure you head over there and leave a comment on the video. But let's get back to the video and look at that last midfield position. And this is a big question mark because will Paul Pogba leave? That's what loads of fans are asking. I don't think he will. 
for a couple of reasons. Firstly, United don't want to sell. I don't think so anyway. He's our best midfielder. Yes, there's attitude problems, but come on, man. Nobody can deny how good Paul Pogba is when he's on form. Secondly, Juventus can't even afford to pay the cash fee that we paid them for Pogba. So for them to sign Pogba, they're going to have to include multiple players in a deal. As for Real Madrid, they won't want to pay the fees that Raiola and Pogba are asking. That's what the latest reports suggest. So not only do United not want to sell, but the clubs interested in buying him won't be able to afford him. All of that combined, I don't think Pogba will be going anywhere this summer. I think he'll be here next year. And we should be building a team around him. Now, I know there are plenty of you fairly, me too, that have frustrations about Paul Pogba. But you don't go about rebuilding a club of United's size and selling your best player like Pogba. Yes, there are issues. But I'm confident that if we build a team good enough around him, because Pogba's levels above most of our all of our team. If we build a good enough team around him, we'll see the sort of Pogba that we saw at the World Cup with France. The World Cup winning Pogba. We'll see the sort of Pogba that had that purple patch for a couple of months when he was on form and the, the team was singing. That's the Pogba I think we'll see next season if we build the right team around him. And I don't think he'll be going anywhere this summer. Now moving on to the attackers. and We've been, we've been linked with plenty of new strikers, new right wingers. Not really any new left wingers. And I think Anthony Martial will absolutely keep his place there next year. And I don't think Alexis Sanchez will be there to challenge him either. Fingers crossed anyway. Now, Martial has committed his future to the club by signing a new contract. And United fans, we all want to see that Martial from the first season. That Louis van Gaal Martial that tore it up was incredible and sensational. I want to see that from Tony next season. And I think if that works and Luke Shaw improves, we'll have an excellent left flank. The problems exist for United down the right, not down the left, by comparison anyway. But Martial has to improve. And if he does, he gets back to that Martial in the first season. Yes, please. That will be a threat that we didn't have last year. And I think Solskjaer is going to put faith in Tony to deliver that. As for the right wing, Jadon Sancho was the name that we all wanted in this position. I don't think United will get him this year. And for that, I'm putting Jesse Lingard in the predicted start at 11 for the first game of the season. I think we'll go in for Sancho a year after, so I don't really feel United will go after a Sancho alternative. I think Solskjaer and United will say, look, we'll wait a year, we'll get back in the Champions League, then we'll go and get Jaden. Maybe he'll cost more, but that's our own fault for not being in the Champions League. I think that will stop us signing Jaden Sancho. And even if we do sign Dan James, which looks like it will happen, I don't think Dan James will come straight into that starting eleven. I think he'll certainly get game time and if he plays well and impresses, then Lingard will be out of the team. But for me, I think for the first game of the season, expect to see Jesse Lingard on the right wing. And the final position, who do I think will lead the line? If Romelu Lukaku leaves and he joins into Milan, will we sign a replacement? Not sure. But I think even if we did, Marcus Rashford would keep his place there. I think Solskjaer has a lot of belief and faith in Rashford. And I think he should. Rashford, yes, he was poor towards the end of last season, as was every United player, man. They're all exhausted. They all fell off a cliff in terms of their form. But Rashford, when he was on form, when Pobble was on form, was a fantastic striker. And I always revert back to that goal he scored against Spurs at Wembley in the 1-0 win. Clinical. Clinical finish from a player who was really confident and on form. I want to see more of that, Rashford, and he certainly needs to improve. And if we've got this front three of Martial, Rashford and Lingard, Going into next season, fans will have real questions over our ability to score goals because we didn't, simply didn't score enough last year. We weren't clinical enough. And Rashford has to improve, Lingard and Martial has to improve. But I think we won't sign Sancho, so I'm going to put Lingard in, in that predicted 11. And I think even if we do sign a replacement like Dembele for Lukaku, I think Rashford will keep his spot because Solskjaer trusts him. And that is what I would say is going to be United's predicted 11 for the first game of the Premier League season. Now, that's what I'm saying anyway. Three new signings in Toby Alderweireld, Aaron Wan-Bissaka and Wilfred Ndidi. That would certainly improve our team massively. A big centre-back signing, a key right-back signing and a needed central midfield signing. It wouldn't be everything I feel we need this summer. We need that right winger. We needed that Sancho. But I worry about United's ability to get all the transfers over the line, you know, 60 plus players we've been linked to. Still haven't got a sporting director in. I'm going to cover that in another video soon. But I want to know from you in the comments now. 
Who would be in your predicted Manchester United eleven for the first game of the 2019-20 season? Let me know what you think in the comments. Clearly, everyone's going to have different opinions and formations and teams and signings that they feel will complete. And I'm really interested to hear what you've got to say, so make sure you get involved. If you are new and you're still here, I like that. Make sure you subscribe. Until next time, take it easy.